Hey everybody, welcome back to Landshark Garage. This episode, we're gonna build a motor to put in that 49. Here we go. So we've been slowly amassing parts. to build a 350 to put in the 49. On this episode, we're gonna put it together. We might even break it in. We'll have to see. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox all this junk, make sure we got everything we need. And uh, then we'll take a look at the block that we had machined eight months ago. This carburetor is gonna go on. I like to lay everything out on a table when I do engines. So I know that I've got everything beforehand. Assembly lube, Royal Purple, never used it before. Gonna try it this year. This time, looks like some pretty good stuff. I usually use like a Lucas assembly lube. TB Zinc additive is on the table there. And my torque converter, seam seal, and black silicone that's about it hopefully i got enough of that assembly lube to get me going but we'll get after it and see what happens all right so little things we're gonna paint it gloss black this go around got a 180 degree thermostat that going new water pump um, true flow water pump same water pump that's on there the motor that's in the 49 all right the motor that's in the 49 right now is uh when we get that out we're just going to go through it and see what we uh if we can do it do something simple cheap budget-wise to keep that motor viable. Mostly I want to take it apart and see if it's a 307, I think is what everybody's putting their bets on, but we'll see. I don't know, it's a good little motor. We've never had any problems with it. One of the problems with this whole project has been, I don't know what it's like in your area, but it took three months to get the machine work done on my block. And, and keep in mind that the company that I work for does a lot of machine work and I was able to slide it in, but it still it took uh, almost three months to bore the block and uh, make sure everything was not cracked and whatnot. So keeping that in mind, I bought remanufactured heads because the price difference between that and, and, and getting a machinist to tackle a set of heads anymore, it was kind of a wash. I mean, I had the heads in seven days. I, I think the one machine shop I talked to said they were six months out on heads and, and that wasn't even coming into racing season. When they get into racing season, everything stops. So I also bought an Eagle crank uh, fairly inexpensive. I this is supposed to be a budget build, but it there's uh, post COVID budget isn't a word anymore. I don't think. But uh, yeah, so I got a zero zero um, eagle crank. Yeah, so that's two hundred twenty nine bucks. And I've had real good luck with these cranks, and I'm not real concerned about it they, uh, this one come from Speedway Motors and it's a it's a cast crank it's not forged this is this 350 is a two block or two block two bolt main single rear main seal or I'm sorry two piece two piece rear main seal and uh, Everything should be pretty good with it. 
keep some receipts there. I bought the rebuild kit from Northern Automotive. I had a buddy of mine put the put the rods on it. They're just a silver light piston stock GM rods. Super low budget aluminum intake. That was also from Speedway Motors. God, I think it was like 119 bucks. It was it wasn't horrible for the Edelbrock. The the 49 right now has a two barrel intake on it and uh, the old Rochester 2G carburetor on it, which is a pretty good carburetor. That one might just stay with that motor if it goes on to the into something else we'll see but for now i'm just going to put the intake with the carburetor and that looks like it's destined to fall over so water pump stuff some guys can just throw stuff together off of a table i have to at least have it kind of organized water pump studs distributor clamp Done with that, and like I said, the motor's still in there, so I kind of had to think ahead while building this. The small block that's in the 49 has a, a real specific oil pan because it's on an S pen S, S10 chassis, and I don't want to. Put that motor in and break it in in the truck i've got a buddy that's got a break-in stand and that's the plan is to put the motor together break it in on his stand so if we have any issues because if, if you're a car guy you know that cams and lifters made recently are, are not not good and my biggest fear is to put everything into the truck and not have a you know have the motor go south during a break-in if you've ever had that happen leave a comment below i broke in a motor one day um, for my brother-in-law when we circle track raced and we were 15 minutes in the break-in when it decided to let go of the lobe on the camshaft and there's there's a very little feeling when you're doing something worse than hearing that motor change and having it all mounted and stuff and break and stand, awesome idea. Wish I had room for one. I don't. My buddy Todd's got one. Said I'm more than welcome to bring it down here. So we're going to have to put a regular small block Chevy oil pan on to begin with. And then when we put it in the 49, we'll, we'll transfer the oil pan. I can already tell that I got the right oil pan. It's got the uh, left-hand side dipstick, and that's the one I got laying over there. So excited about that. Let's keep going. New ring gear. That really isn't mandatory, but I know the ring gear on the 49 is is, is uh, time to be changed anyway. We've been having some starting issue with it that so make me think it's ring gear related. Uh, intake gaskets. These are the intake gaskets that came with the less expensive intake manifold. And uh, I'll hang on to them just for... I like, I like to use 1204 Felpro gaskets, good gaskets. New head bolts. Like I said, I ordered the engine kit from Northern. And this is about as far as I've gotten to opening it, so now everything is new to me. This is a Melling cam. Nothing cam. I mean, Let's see. Yeah. It's just it's just a it's just a stock cam. These are uh, rod bearings. Main bearings, Hastings rings, gotta put them on the pump on the pistons yet. 
got a intake manifold bolt kit that I probably won't use. I hope there's more than four lifters. Expansion plug kit, won't use. Put that into stock. Guy always needs them. Elgin lifters. Should be okay. We'll get them soaking in oil. Do you guys soak your lifters in oil? Before you put them in? I always do. I don't know why. Stock, melling, oil pump. Cam bearings. Hmm, cam bearings, yeah. That might change things. I think I think cam bearings are already installed. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, time chain gears. I've got a performance one of them I might use. Three lifters. Three lifters. Not lifters, push rods. Three push rods. That is not comforting. Let's make sure they're not in here. They're not. Okay. Well. Hmm. Might need to gather up some push rods by the looks of it. I honestly can't remember when I got this kit. It's a little hard to go back and go, hey, they were sending my lifters seven months ago. So the heads I bought are just regular uh, ATK. I'll give you the part number off them. Two Charlie 13s. 2C13. And they are... Uh, Stock, small block Chevy, heads 194s and 15s, I think, on the valves. Like I said, ATK makes them. I just ordered them through Napa. Hopefully, their uh, heads are better than their motors or their engines because. They've had some engine issues lately, I know. Rocker arms. They give you this tote so you can send your cores back, your, your 350. Heads, you know, from your, from your replacing them, but uh, I had to eat the core just because I don't have any heads to send back. I don't have any heads that I want to send back. I, I think the core was like 50 bucks on them, so it wasn't like a deal breaker. <sighs> Nothing's ever a deal breaker. I found with ATK heads that they'll grind the casting number off of it. The GM casting number. This one's not there. There's not a casting number on it. It's got a serial number on it. Got a plate. Mexico. Look like pretty good hits. Got a little surface rust. I've had them sitting around for several months. Everything's for several months. I don't. I think they're screw in studs, actually. Maybe. I, don't know. I can see it looks like thread, unless it's some kind of a sealant. 
it's got the no you overheated your engine deal so yeah get the rest of that stuff tore out and maybe we can start tackling that block well i got some push rods ordered never did find them so let's see what's inside here like i said this uh, i had the machine worked on a long time ago i mean it's been, it's been wrapped up for quite a while and i don't remember if i put cam bearings in it See what we got for our machining costs. Got brass soft plugs, pretty good. 010 black, so you know it's a uh, two bolt main, standard 350. Always check and make sure these plugs are where they're supposed to be so you don't have oil squirting out. Ask me how I know about that. This concerns me a little bit. I don't know what this is. I mean, it doesn't concern me. It looks like there was, I don't know, they built something up there, but block was in good shape, they said. Cam bearings are in. And they're in right. So, I think we're a go. I don't see anything. Looks like a good wipe down. Be in order with some brake clean. And, uh, I already broke my vise or my engine stand. There's supposed to be a grease zerk in there so you can grease zerk things. Bought this extra stand because I thought we were going to have two engines side by side, blah, 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 messing around with it. And, Nah, change my mind on that deal. So we're gonna start putting this thing together. Well, by we, I mean you guys and me. We'll we'll get her done. We'll take care of it, no problem. Put the crank in first. Start working our way bottom to the top. Sound right? Should have everything I need. Minus eleven push rods otherwise it, it appears to me that everything else is here like i said i got a different timing chain and gear hanging up over there that i'll probably use instead of that mail gear i haven't looked at it maybe i will use that but yeah let's get after it had to find a block off plate for the fuel pump 49's got an electric fuel pump in it so had to get that taken care of get the bearings put in we'll get the crank set in there see how much we get done
Well, I'm actually waiting for a lot of stuff now. I'm gonna put the put the camshaft in. Got the crank stuck in. Got all the rings put on my pistons. Um, I don't have an oil pump pickup. I thought I had one. I actually thought it came with one, but it didn't. Um, so I don't. Yeah, I don't have an oil pump pickup. I'm waiting on lifters and. There was one more thing. Oh, I'll think about it. But I was I was short just a few things. So luckily, you'll see the the container over there in the corner. That one. There's all the bolts from this that I just dumped in there when I took them out. And good thing because this one real specific bolt that holds the oil pump in wasn't stuck in the cap like I thought I did but obviously I did because that is the stuff that came off this motor so I bought one of these fancy little handles for uh, putting in camshafts never had one before camshaft has a little rust on it that's disheartening either or got this handle I'm gonna get my mating surfaces all nice and done with the max tough and then I'm just gonna put this guy in there so it can have feel like it's got a place in life I guess all that so They make a cam lube, I guess, but I've always just used Royal Purple or uh, Lucas. Lucas Assembly Lube was always my go-to, I guess. I'm going to try and do this without messing anything up. The handle is handy. When you get back there a ways, what's the matter, Jake? Huh? Oh, buddy. When you get back in there a ways this thing gets heavy and you kind of just want to slowly feed the eye the eyelet is that what it is yeah when you get back here then you're not you don't have a lot of control over that back part there we go so I will probably leave this cam tool on here while I'm putting my pistons and stuff in so I can move it around a little bit I don't know it is what it is we're gonna find out the quality of this stuff I guess on the break-in table but once I get this buttoned up and the pistons installed then I'll get my oil pump and stuff on put the oil pan on it flip it over and then I'll coat my lifter holes and down in the valley onto the lobes of the cam so that uh, everything's well lubricated but for now I'm gonna call it quits right here I'll put the pistons and stuff in when my parts show up in a couple days and uh, we'll, we'll finish this guy out all right well here we are continue on with our putting our small block Chevy together for the 49 camshafts in I got the rings on the pistons so we're gonna start putting the pistons in now I'm trying to find a wood drift key so I can put my timing chain and gear on when that comes time to do it but uh this has got a two slot crank on it my new harmonic balancer came with a key but it doesn't look like the timing chain and gears did i don't see one any place 
not a big deal. I have them on hand. I did have to. I did have to buy push rods, and that that was the big thing. Was trying to get enough push rods. I think I ordered from four different warehouses at the parts store to to make sure I got enough to do the project. I actually got a few more than I need, but that's fine. So this side of the block would be 1357, 2468 on the other side. So I'm going to get one piston set in there and then kind of tell you how I do it. Doesn't mean it's the right way. It's the way I do it. I've got all my, all my pistons mark to go back together there I mean they're stamped and stuff but it's a lot easier to see that yellow mark and we're gonna start with number one I have a, a little tray of assembly lube to put on my bearings I've got my ring compressor ready uh, this is a really nice one I've had it for years it's a 4 ring compressor works really good I've got my little vat that my Lifters are are working in, and I, I like to put a little oil in the in the cylinder, little on the piston rings before I start putting them together. And the vat of assembly lube. So I'm gonna put each bearing in as we go on each piston. And like I said, this is just this is just the way I've always done it. Doesn't make it right. If you have a different way of doing it, let me know down in the comments. Always looking for better ways to do things, but I put a lot of this assembly lube on the bearing, whatnot. So the bearing's got a mark on it says which direction it's supposed to go. Mine have a mark on the bottom also. I use the I use rubber hoses to protect that from going into my uh, you know galling my crankshaft or anything. And just kind of make sure everything goes in here right. Make sure they're nice and even. Tighten that down so my rings are get compressed. All right, a little bit more oil in there around the top. Okay, I've got a crank turning tool that I use. I put my woodruff keys in now that I found the other one. And uh, okay. Let's see. Where's this guy here.
Forgot to make sure the crank was up. This is a tedious process putting pistons in. They make a really cool dead blow hammer that's got a long end on it for doing this, but I used to use just a chunk of 4x4. the same thing with my cap and put my cap on. Just running the nuts up on the piston. I'm sorry, the nuts down to the cap. Just getting them kind of tight. Just to make sure everything flows right. Right there. And I'll bring three up to where I want it. And I'll see you guys later, because I'm going to finish this. All right. Pistons are in. Torque down. I put my oil pump on. Got my pickup that didn't come with the kit. I thought it was. I don't think it, I don't know if it's supposed to or not. Anyway, got my oil pickup in the freezer. Helps it go into here a little bit better. I'm going to put the timing chain and gears on and get that set uh, so this is just the kit that came with it it's not a double roller it'll be fine it's just a street hot rod but it's only got one mark on it some of these got different keyways and stuff for advance this is just a straight up dot to dot timing chain and gears so I'm gonna stick that on now my patented Timing chain sprocket installing tool, which is basically just a four wheel drive socket that's just as big. Helps it helps it cruise on there. Just make sure it's going on flush, that's the biggest thing. Okay. Now, uh, it's a tip I learned from a guy. Told me to put this guy on here first. So your dot on your timing sprocket and this need to meet up. So in order to make that happen, Bring this guy down where I want it. That should be, yep, right there. As you can see, I was feeling the piston so that I know that it's at that top dead center spot that looks gravy so there's a lineup peg on this camshaft and I'm gonna put one bolt in so that I can turn it to where I want it which is right there that way the camshaft is set to take the bolts now so you don't have to fight with it once you put the chain on it, you can just put the chain on, slide it down, and bolt it down. In theory, if something moves, that uh, that doesn't work quite so well, but it's the way I've always done it. All right, I'll get them all torqued down. Next, I'm going to put the timing cover and, and an oil pan on it I'm not gonna set my oil I'm gonna set my oil pickup but I'm not gonna like weld it because the oil pan that I'm gonna use for breaking it in is different than the oil pan that's in the 49 and I have to use that oil pan because of the s10 chassis blah 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 we've said that before 
So I'm gonna put an oil pan, I'm sorry, a timing cover on here and an oil pan and get that all set and we'll flip it over and start working on the top side. All right, we're all buttoned up. Let's do the top end. Right, Jake? Huh? Should we do the top end? Are you pretty excited about that? I don't think there's anything in there to eat, bro. I really don't. What do you think we should put on first? Oh yeah. Don't forget that. So a funny story, I put that head on there and I tried to remember if the accessory mounting bolts, if I needed to have three here or three there and it doesn't matter because the three's on this side and the one's on this side. But when I laid that head down, this little piece of wax paper was stuck in the combustion chamber from when I had it resting on there. So. Good thing I was thinking about that, because that would have made it interesting on old number eight. <clears throat> this guy is just not setting on there right. What's going on, Jake? I like these aftermarket head bolt kits because they got the smaller heads on them and they come pre looby dooby. You ever had a head fall off while you're trying to put it on? That's why I'm trying to keep one hand on it all the time until I get. Bunch of bolts in it to hold it. And then the last thing you want to do is drop your damn bolts down in the lifter galley, I'm sure. That's not good, is it, Jacob? These head gaskets are sticky. What kind of projects are you guys working on for the summer? Leave a leave a message down in the comments. If you like our content, please subscribe, like, share, set up notifications. All that stuff that everybody tells you they want you to do makes a huge difference. And we appreciate it. And this is going to be fun. Now that it's finally getting to the point in the year where a guy can start doing hot rod stuff with us. There we go, all torqued down, ready to go. Nah, just kidding. So now we'll torque the heads down. Jakey boy, what's the torquey torque on them, huh? Do you know? Shouldn't have right off the top of my head, right? Your head wasn't so fat, Dad. Well, let's just consult the old handy dandy 60 then 75, right?
Got it all oiled. Oh yeah, you hear that? Lifters are all in. Push rods are going in. Now that I got 16 of them. I'm gonna put the rockers on, set the valves. In time warp. I like to set my valves without the intake on, that way I can put each cylinder on top dead center. Do my setting there just like everybody else does, just by feel. And then uh, do the final setup. Probably when we've got it on the break-in stand, make sure. I know my guy with the break-in stand, he's going to go over everything I did anyway, so. Got brand new rocker arms with the new heads. No fulcrums, no nuts, but brand new rocker arms. So now I gotta go on the hunt. I'm sure I got them someplace. Don't know that I kept them off the old heads. So that'll make it more interesting again. Why wouldn't you send that with? I mean, if you're sending these, why not send everything? Let's see what we find here. Well, folks, there's Jake. Had some major GoPro issues. So I have no footage of fighting this harmonic balancer. We'll talk about that. I painted stuff that you're going to see right away. I'll, I'll finish painting it later, but I didn't want to have orange showing through if I could help it. Set the valves. Um, then I realized that my camera wasn't cameraing. So there I was talking to myself for no reason. Good thing most of it was in fast forward. But let me let me go through what we did here. So I, I set my valves. There's a lot of different ways to set them. Here's how I do it. I set my number one on top dead center and then I go through and do exhaust valves one three four and eight one three four and eight and intake valves one two five and seven and then I rotate it over so it's on top dead center on number six and and you can tell by looking at your lifters I mean I'm using my harmonic balance here but you can tell by using your looking at your lifters because they go static here and and then when I'm on top dead center on number six I do exhaust two five six seven, intake three four six eight, and I set mine so that they don't rattle up and down. I don't do the spinning method. I do it till the lash is gone, and then I go a quarter of a turn after that. So I tighten it till you can't move this pusher out up and down, and since they're already set, I'm not going to do that and reshow yet. But so you can't move this up and down. Some people use the turning method, that's fine. They, whatever works for you. Um, this way, if anything, I'm a little loose and I'm not overly tight in my valves. Okay, harmonic balancer. This harmonic balancer number two. Harmonic balancer number one. I fought it going on and when I took it off, it had a curl inside of it of steel. So I should have done this beforehand but I got my mic out, measured the end of my crank, measured the inside of my harmonic balancer. They were too close for comfort, measurement wise. You know, like, so the end of the crank snout was like 1.50 and the uh, inside of my new harmonic balancer was almost the same thing. So it was fighting against itself. So I, Got a different harmonic balancer. I kept that old one because if this wasn't all new stuff, it, it probably I probably wouldn't have had this issue if it wasn't all like a new crank and new harmonic balancer. But the way to do that, I just took the balancer, chucked it up in my vise, and ran a brake hone through it for a brake cylinder hone. And I just cleaned it up inside of there, kept measuring it, 
till I was comfortable with it. It slid right on the way it should. Um, I used the tool to put it on. It was all good on video. I bet it was great, great content, but you're not going to get to see it, unfortunately. So what I have left to do, put the intake on, which is pretty boring. Um, RTV silicone on both China walls, boop, bolted down, done, and I'm taking it off, and we're going to break it in. So that being said, this video is going to suck, but it's done, and this motor's done. And I can get it off to my buddies to uh, break it in. So thanks for watching. Don't give up on us. We're still hanging in there. Never forget, drive your shit. We'll see ya.